Trevor Loudon. Don and I first met Trevor years ago right here, actually at the South Carolina Tea Party Coalition Convention, where he electrified the audience, and he's going to do it again. Since that time, he's become a great friend, a frequent guest on Cowboy Logic Radio, a member of the Talk America Radio Kitchen Cabinet, and again with his beautiful wife, Victoria, has been a special guest at our home, Victoria playing pool while we interviewed Cle Ke <laughs> Trevor. From Christchurch, New Zealand, Trevor has been researching the radical left for more than 30 years. He discovered the long hidden relationship between notorious Hawaiian Communist Party member Frank Marshall Davis and the young Barack Obama back in 2007. After extensively researching Obama's ties to the New York and Chicago Marxist movements, Trevor began publishing his findings online, catching the eye of such prominent voices as Accuracy in Media and syndicated radio host Glenn Beck. In 2009, Trevor appeared or exposed the communist roots of Obama's green jobs czar Van Jones, and after an extensive campaign by Glenn Beck and others, Jones was forced to resign from his White House position. Yeah. Since 2011, Trevor Loudon has toured the United States promoting his two books, Barack Obama and The Enemies Within, that we were talking about just a second ago, The Enemies Within, Communists, Socialists, and Progressives, in the U.S. Congress, an extensive footnote expose of the rapidly unfolding Marxist takeover of our United States government. One thing led to another, and before long, Trevor added filmmaker to his resume with both, both a feature length and shorter documentaries based on his research and his books. He's addressed more than 400 conservative Tea Party religious and Republican groups in almost 50 states, travels all around the country. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome once again Trevor Loudon. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys, for the great intro. Thanks to Joe and all the crew for organizing this. And uh, thanks to America for saving us in World War II. You know, I'm, I'm not kidding on that, people. You know, we were facing invasion by the Japanese army. If it hadn't been for your uncles and grandfathers and fathers at Guadalcanal and the Coral Sea and Midway, we would have been done, folks. We really would have, and uh, there's a gentleman there laughing because he told me a story about a, a long-lost relative that was fathered by his father in Australia, and so uh, he may not want me to tell that, but that's the way it is. <laughs> so, um, look, I, I want to I talk about three things to do with the election straight up, then I'll get into my speech. The first thing is, I know how hard you guys work. I know the door knocking you do, the phone banking, the letter writing, the marches, the rallies, all of that hard work. You tell me this, was it worth it on election night? <laughs> Would you do it all over again to get the same result, people? The second thing is this. Remember about two o'clock in the morning on election night, and they panned round the Democratic Party headquarters. Well, the Germans have a phrase, a word, it's schadenfreude. It means taking pleasure in the pain of others. <laughs> and it's not a very noble thing, is it? But did you feel a little bit of schadenfreude? And do you think you deserved it after eight years of Obama trashing your country? Well, you hold on to that pleasure, people, because you can have it again. So the third thing I'd like to say is this. I think that election... Does anybody believe there may have been a touch of the miraculous about that election? I think even the most atheists would agree with that, right? But, you know, if you look back in the... You know, was it a, a complete saving of this country or was it a reprieve? See, if you look back in the Old Testament, there are a lot of second chances in the Old Testament. You know, you're the Israelites, if you've wandered off the farm, you're not doing the right thing, get back on track. And sometimes they did and sometimes they didn't. And if they didn't, there were always consequences. 
Well, we are on our second chance, people. We were given one more shot to save this country because there were enough righteous, good people left to make the right decision. People, we got to work to use this opportunity because if we blow this, are we going to get another shot? So we got to use it. Now, I think I want, to, I want to talk a little bit about now what I think the Democrat plan is for winning in 2020 and how we can counter it. Now, have you ever seen as much vitriol and hatred directed at a sitting president as, as at this one? Even close, Bush, Reagan? Not even close, right? It doesn't matter what he does. It doesn't matter what his wife does, his relatives do. There is contempt and hatred and vitriol poured on them from every quarter. Now, why is this? I think part of it's very simple. You know, the Democrats, they believed their own propaganda. They knew they were going to win. They were so excited. They could feel it and touch it. And on election night, they turned into a bunch of kids who thought they were going to get the biggest bike you've ever seen for Christmas, and they got a pair of socks. <laughs> and they are bitter and angry. But I think it's even more than that. That's, that's part of human nature. But see, this is what I think it is. If you're a Democrat, you own certain segments of the population, right? You own the black community. You own the Latinos, you own the gays, you own the Native Americans, you own the white union guys in Pennsylvania and Ohio. You own them, they're your base. That's what gets you elected. And when Donald Trump went to those white union guys in Pennsylvania and said, I don't see a lot of industry here, guys. I see a lot of closed down factories. Is this what the Democrats have done for you? And they said, hell yeah. And they wanted the industries back. They wanted America great again. And they changed their voting patterns of a lifetime. <laughs> and when he went into the black communities and said, I don't see a lot of prosperity or jobs here, people. I see a lot of drugs and crime. Is this what Democrat rule has done for you? Well, vote for me, people. What have you got to lose? And they said, hell yeah. And a lot of them did. And now they've got the best, lowest unemployment they've ever had, folks. But see, this is what is freaking the Democrats out. Because they understand that if Donald Trump is a successful president, that if he gets the taxes down, he opens up the energy fields, he shuts down the flow of illegal immigrant labor across the southern border. If he stops the drugs coming into the inner cities, because the only place the drugs are coming through is, the, is through the slack border control. If he can stop all that, he can cause a realignment in American politics that we haven't seen for 60 years. If he can bring prosperity back to the Rust Belt and bring hope and prosperity into the inner cities, he can cause a, a collapse of the Democratic Party vote like you've never seen before. And that is why they are freaking, folks. That's why they're absolutely desperate. Because they understand that if this president is successful, they're out of power maybe for decades. Do you understand why they're so desperate? No rat is more cornered, worse than a cornered one, people. And that's where they are now. And they are fighting back. You know, you know uh, some of the Vietnam veterans here might remember the famous Tet Offensive of 68, when the communists were completely defeated, where it was virtually a matter of just finishing it off. And they mounted a major attack on military bases all across the South. Just suicidal attacks on bases everywhere. And they were slaughtered. It was a military defeat. But it turned the tide of public opinion in, the, in America. Because Americans thought, we thought we had this one. Look at that, what they're doing. Are we wasting our time here? 
Well, that's what the Democrats and the left are doing now, folks. This is their Tet Offensive. This is their last desperate stand, and they're throwing everything they can at us. Do we crumble or do we hold the line, people? That's what we got to do, folks, because we got to call their bluff and they will collapse. Now, I want to talk about their plan now. Who remembers the old Rainbow Coalition of the 1980s? Jesse Jackson, the great scamster. Okay? His brilliant idea was this. You get the progressive whites. You get the progressive blacks. You get the progressive Latinos. The progressive Asian Americans. They put the gays in there as the lavender. You get the... Um, the Asians, so you got white, brown, black, yellow, red for the Native Americans. And this is their terminology, not mine. The Rainbow Coalition. You get this big progressive coalition together, and that got them 7 million votes in 1988. Not enough, but still a respectable showing. Well, there's a man out of San Francisco, I think the most dangerous man in America right now. There's a man called Stephen Phillips. He wrote a book called Brown is the New White. Look it up online. He was, it's endorsed by Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama. And his argument is very simple. There are 26% of the electorate in America today are, are white progressives. They will vote Democrat if Adolf Hitler was on the ticket. They wouldn't care. 25% of the electorate are progressives of color. Black, Latino, Native American, Muslims, etc. 25 plus 26 is 51 percent. The new American majority. Now, Steve Phillips worked for a whole year in the Rainbow Coalition. He was a West Coast coordinator. He was also a member of an organization called the League of Revolutionary Struggle, a Maoist group. He was very active at Stanford University. And you saw Gordon Chang here speak yesterday, right? Well, he's the good Gordon Chang, but there was a bad Gordon Chang called Gordon H. Chang, who was the leader of this communist group. And he's still around, and he led this communist group, pro-Chinese. But in 1990, they all went into the Rainbow Coalition. They were the backbone of the Rainbow Coalition. In 1990, they dissolved that group, and they all went into the Democratic Party. Now, at Stanford University, there was a man, a young football player who was very close to Steve Phillips, who was part of their group. You might have heard of him. He's now called, he's called Cory Booker, senator from New Jersey. There was also a young woman who was part of this radical group as well. You might have heard of her sister. She's called Kamala Harris, senator from California. The rain, Steve Phillips is out there now. He married into the very wealthy Sandler family from San Francisco, multi-billionaire Democrat donors. Steve Phillips serves on the board of the Center for American Progress, very well connected to the Democratic Party. He was the first man to fund Barack Obama. He set up a group called Power Pack, and they are funding candidates of color all around the country. They funded Booker, they funded Kamala Harris, Maisie Hirono, the senator from um, Hawaii, um, Tulsi Gabbard, the congresswoman from Hawaii. They're funding the governor's races right now in Florida behind Andrew Gillum, a Marxist, behind Stacey Abrams in Georgia, and behind um, Ben Jealous, who's standing for the governorship of Maryland, plus a whole bunch of other candidates. So what they are doing is they're pouring millions of dollars and thousands of organizers into North Carolina, Florida, Texas, Arizona, and Georgia. Because all of those states are swing states, and all of them have very large Latino and black populations who don't vote. And they are putting huge amount of resources into voter registration drives and get out the vote efforts. Now, you've seen it happen before because this Marxist group, um, he's run, working with Freedom Road Socialist Organization, which are the people behind Black Lives Matter. They've got a group in Virginia called New Virginia Majority. They signed up all the, they got the felons, the voting rights in Virginia. 
They work with the Democrats, and they also signed up at least 300,000 black, Latino, and Muslim voters in that state. That's how they flipped Virginia people. They are also working in Alabama, and Alabama is a very red state, but when they saw that Roy Moore was a damaged candidate, they smelt blood in the water, and they poured all their people in there, and they won that election. So what I'm saying is this. There's a two-part strategy. The first is destroy Donald Trump. Absolutely destroy Donald Trump, stop him getting anything done, stall him, impeach him, denigrate him, divide his support base, vilify his support base. Have they been doing that? And the second part of the strategy is when that is done, they're going to re resurrect the rainbow coalition strategy of the 1980s, and they're going to run Kamala Harris and Cory Booker, possibly Deval Patrick, maybe one or two others in the mix, and they're going to run them at the top of the ticket in 2020 to energize the black, Latino, Asian American progressive vote. They're not going back to the middle, people. They are going full-on, hardcore, progressive, running a rainbow coalition strategy. And you can put money on it that Cory Booker and Kamala Harris, barring accidents, will be on that ticket. Here's my bet to you. Does any of that sound plausible, folks? Any of it sound crazy or way out? So the strategy is very simple. You destroy Trump. You run Cory Booker, Kamala Harris. You get energize the black vote. You get, you win with 51, 52, 53 percent of the vote. All they have to do is flip Georgia or Florida. And remember, Florida has now got 150,000 Puerto Ricans moving into the state. You think they're going to vote Republican, folks? Donald Trump won that state by 120,000 votes. There's now 150,000 new Democrats in there right now. So do you see what we're up against, people? Do you see that there's no room for complacency? And I'll put just, uh, they gave a good shout out to my book. Thank you, Don. But I want you to also get the movie. Because what we say, my argument is this. The Democrats are no longer the party of Harry Truman or JFK. The Democratic Party is now a communist party. There are at least 100 members of the House and 20 members of the Senate who are so enmeshed in Muslim Brotherhood front groups or communist front groups or both, they couldn't pass an FBI background check to drive a school bus. Yet they're serving on the Armed Services Committee, the Homeland Security Committee, every major committee. And one of the worst is a man called Dick Durbin. The man behind the DREAM Act, people. And I've just published an article on my blog, trevorloudon.com, to show that Dick Durbin has been working for 10 years with a radical group that supported North Korea to develop that DREAM Act and promote it. They have been, it's called Narcosec. They were pro-North Korean. They switched their emphasis to, passing, to promoting illegal immigration and amnesty. And they are the people that gave you the DREAM Act and are the people pushing right now for DACA. A pro-North Korean group and your second-ranking Democrat senator is working with those people while North Korea threatens, threatens this country with nuclear attack. How deep is the treason, people? So this is what we're faced with. This is our choice. I heard the other day a lady say, well, we've got President Trump. We don't need the tea parties anymore. Well, do you think George Washington won the revolution all by himself, folks? You know, Donald Trump is under attack from every direction, from Hollywood, from the media, from the rhino Republicans, from the deep state, from the communist movement, from Black Lives Matter, from North Korea. Do you not think he needs a little bit of help? And you are the people that put him there, folks, and you have got to be that army. You've got to be that army, because we need it. So this is our choice, people. 
We can all sit back and have a well-deserved holiday, and God knows you all deserve it. You can sit back and have a holiday and watch the whole thing come tumbling down in 2020. You can see President Kamala Harris legalize 12 to 40 million illegal immigrants who will all vote 80% Democrat, and you can kiss your country goodbye, and you can shamefully tell your grandchildren how you lost their country for them. Or you can give it everything you've got, people, with this God-given opportunity to take this country back. You ima <laughs> People say, the Tea Party, well, you know, what are they? I'll tell you a story. I was in, about three years ago, I was in Jim Bridenstine's office in Washington, D.C., He's a very conservative rep from Oklahoma. He may be the next head of NASA. And he told me, he said, Trevor, on Friday, the Republicans are going to vote amnesty through the House. They'd already put it through the Senate. And I said, are they crazy? Do they know what it's going to do, that it's going to destroy the party? He said, yeah, well, they don't really think about that. They get a lot of money from the Chamber of Commerce, and the Chamber wants cheap labor, so they're going to do it. They've got the numbers. And I said, Seriously, they're going to do this. He said, yep, we can't stop it. That Friday, that Thursday, I believe it was, about 200 Tea Party volunteers, on less than that, with a budget of $200,000, went up in a special election against a man called Eric Cantor from Virginia, the Speaker of the House, people. <laughs> the top rhino, the big amnesty guy, Jeb Bush's protege, went right up, and Dave Bratt, with $200,000, went up against a man with $5 million in the bank with a few Tea Party volunteers and took him out by 8%. Amnesty was dead the next day, people. The rhinos freaked. They gave up. They said, we can't do this. We're going to... They, and, and that stopped amnesty. That one election with a few Tea Party volunteers, less than what is in this room now, saved this country. Absolutely saved this country, folks. Don't ever let me, any of you tell me the Tea Party movement isn't the most important political movement we have seen for decades, folks. So this is our choice, and I think it's a very stark one. We can spend the next, we got the next, what, what we got is, is very clear. One of the big things that Donald Trump needs is a clear majority in the Senate. Because that's what's holding him back, people. Now, we've got eight Republicans up for re-election in the Senate next year. One of them in Tennessee, right next door. Corker's stood down, but whoever's going to replace him, every person in this room should be picking out one of those electorates, if you don't live in them, and getting involved in that Senate race. First, to make sure that the most conservative possible candidate wins on the Republican side, and then to make sure they get elected. Now, you imagine if Donald Trump had four or five more Ted Cruz's and, and Tom Cotton's to help him, rather than a whole bunch of Lindsey Grahams and Lisa Murkowski's. Wouldn't that make a difference? Isn't that the most productive thing you could do with your time up until the next election? I'll tell you, do you know which state, which state probably contributed more than any other state to Trump's victory? You won't believe this. California. Because California had 30,000 volunteers who were phone banking into Florida, into Pennsylvania, and into Ohio. You tell me they didn't make a difference, folks. You don't have to be in one of these states to make a difference. You can door knock, go into Tennessee and door knock. You can phone bank into Tennessee or Montana or Wyoming or Florida. You can make a difference in those seven critical states. We'll leave Ted Cruz there, he's fine. But those other seven need to be replaced. That is the focus, people. 
That is the mission for the Tea Party in the next election, to make sure those states are one and one with good conservatives. Can you think of anything else that will make more of a difference? So that's the mission, folks. So we got this choice. We can sit back, have a holiday, play more golf, catch more bass, whatever you do. And that's great. But you will have to confront your children and grandchildren one day and explain to them why you lost their country. Or we can give it everything we have within us, everything that's all our money, our time, our resources, our energy over the next year, the next two years. We can give it everything we've got for our God, our country, our constitution, and our family. Now, I can't promise you much, folks, but I can promise you two things. If we give it everything that's within us to turn this country around, and you just imagine, people, if President Trump can get the economy pumping again like it is and even better, if he can close those southern borders and restore the Constitution, we will have an economic boom in this country like you have never seen, people. You will spark liberty revolutions all over this planet. Do you think Iran is going to stay under the control of the mullahs if we turn this country around? Do you think the, the common market, the EU, is going to keep suppressing its citizens if we turn this country around? Brexit will just be the first step, people. We will see revolutions across the Middle East across Africa and Latin America if we turn this country around. And there'll be revolutions for freedom, people, not revolutions for tyranny. So this is our choice. We can do nothing and we can let the light go out and it will go out everywhere, people. There's nowhere to run. Or we can give it everything we've got, as I said, for our God, our country, our constitution, and our families. And if we do that, two things may happen. The first is we may give it everything we've got, and we still may come up short. But at least you will earn the right to look your children in the eye and say, I did everything I possibly could. What is that worth to you, folks? And if you win, and you can win, because that last election proved to me that God is not finished with this country yet. If you win, folks, you will give your children not just the amazing country that you inherited, you will give your children the most prosperous, richest, and freest country the world has ever seen. You will spark liberty revolutions all over this planet, people. You will spread the flames of liberty across this globe. Is that worth fighting for? So I want to say to you folks, thank you so much for what you do for America, for my country, and for liberty. God bless America, and God bless the Tea Party. Thank you.